that you don't see. That's why I, I wanted to be sure I brought forth the part that is unapproachable to us, that we're in this dimension and he's in another. But we're still family. Okay. But he has means of protecting you that you don't see. And many times we'd never even know about it other than to say, Whoa, man, did I, was I lucky that time? Ooh. You know, it happens. Okay. But, hey, have it however you wish. God is still very real, and faith is a wonderful thing. Okay. He told me, he said, uh, those chains come falling off, and Peter's a free man. Eight, and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. In other words, get dressed and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he said unto, saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. In other words, shake it up, shake it up, get dressed here, and come with me. And hear this light. Does it paralyze the other guards? If God chooses, it will. They're not going to move. They're not going to twitch. Okay? God's in control. Verse 9, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. He didn't know whether he was dreaming or awake or what was happening. He wasn't even sure it was real. Okay, That light that comes from God, that light that is unchangeable, that light that is unapproachable, but it's there for you. It's there for us. It's our Father and His presence. Uh, when, um, uh, and He went out and followed Him and wist not, oh, He didn't know whether He was dreaming or not. Ten. When they were past the first and the second ward, I mean, this, these, these are um, uh, cell blocks. They're walking through them like they were wide open. Why? Because they were. Well, who did it? Well, the light, of course, the Father's uh, servants, the angels. They came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them on his way accord, on his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Gone. Peter was on his own. But here, you see... God had a purpose for Peter. He wasn't through with him yet. And he, wasn't, he needed him as a witness still further. So God's in control, and God can touch. And I thank him for that. I thank him for that light. I thank him for the gifts that he gives you all, that in your, people in your presence can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. For that light, it comes from upward to we that are downward, under. And it strengthens us, and it leads us, and it guides us through his word as his light that never changes. Not in this earth age, nor the one to come. God's word and God's light will always be the same, unchangeable. Turn with me to the second chapter of Luke. Luke chapter 2. night of the birth of Christ, okay, the Father picks witnesses that are total strangers because he has a way of gifting them with faith. He kind of knows what people to deal with naturally. Why? Because he knows their minds and their souls. So concerning the light of faith and witness, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 and you all know this story by heart, okay? But that's fine. Hang with me. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field and keeping watch over their flock at night. This is why we know the correct birth date by the um, uh, course of Abiah, which one. 
because they were still, the shepherds were still out in the fields. It wasn't winter time, in other words, okay? Not December. <laughs> uh, and um, they, they were out there with their sheep. That's what shepherds do, okay? And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory, that's the Shekinah glory. In the Hebrew 7935, a lot of people have trouble finding it because it's not often brought forth as it should be. 7935 in your Hebrew dictionary. The glory of the Lord shone, shined, shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Do you know what this word shown is in the, in the Greek? It's interesting. It's per a lampo. Okay. You got it? Lamp O. All right. The lamp's burning. All right. The lamp's shining. The lamp of God shines and shone upon them, touched them. And how fascinating it is. You know now that that light never changes. And you know now that that light is unapproachable by man, but man better follow it. Okay? Better listen to it. Verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. How many people? This twelve tribes scattered by all people. Okay? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. In other words, that Savior came to earth. Why? Well, to save, of course. That's what it's all about. Otherwise, if we had to count on our own goodness to attain salvation, I don't have to tell you where we'd be. Okay? And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, I want you to see this now, don't read over it. There was a whole army of angels with them. A, whole, a host means hundreds and thousands that were there. You don't know what God has. It's unapproachable to us. But within that light, God takes care of his own. You've got to have faith to know and understand that. Do you know why? Because he loves you. Now, I may not know why, but he does love you. He loves all of us. I do know why. I, I'm teasing a little bit. The Irish is beginning to act up here. But God loves you, and that's why he created somebody just like you. Your fingerprints are different. Your DNA is different, unless you're twins. <laughs> and identical, that is. And why? Because he wanted someone just like you. And them. Okay. And praise God for that. Okay. Because he does love you. And, and if it's necessary, he'll send a whole host as we come into these end times to accomplish what must be accomplished. I don't know. How's your faith running? Is it half full, half empty, or you running on low, or are you full? Okay, think about it. Okay. But, and suddenly, there we, we got that with the 14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go, let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. They didn't have any doubt who sent the word. They didn't have any doubt from where that light came. That soothing voice of God that said, Fear not. Fear not. I got some good news. Well, you know something? This whole book is good news. There may be some parts of it that would make the tummy a little bitter, but it's still good news because it corrects people we love to bring them into tow, whereby we may have them for the eternity. If they're changed and it's made right, then we'll have them there with us. 
Turn with me now to Luke 17. This is the same book, okay? Luke 17. We're going to bring this light to the end times now, okay? This is where it really pertains to you. Verse 22, Luke chapter 17. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you won't see it. But you know something? You don't have to because you can feel him. What he meant was he was going to be crucified, and he was going to sit at the right hand of God as our attorney, as our um, uh, redeemer, kinsman redeemer, where he can take care of us, okay? Verse 23, don't ever forget this verse. It's very important to you. And they shall say to you, see here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. They're going to tell you Christ is here, Christ is there. What he's telling you, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not here. But they're going to point out a false Christ to you. And don't you go, because it's the Antichrist. The Antichrist comes at the sixth trump. The true Christ does not return until the seventh trump. God's elect have work to do at that time. They're gifted for that, for that purpose. And they know the light, and they have faith to live within that. Verse 24, For as the lightning that lighteneth out of one part under heaven shineth, here's that shining again, okay, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. When he does return at that seventh trump, then you're not going to have to wonder, well, is it really him? From one end of heaven to the other, and the host with him. And you will know the true Christ has returned. I want to tell you about this word shineth here. Do you know what it is in the Greek? It's part of the um, pori lampo, only this time it's just lampo. Okay. Just lampo, that lamp shines. Let it shine in your life. See that light. Feel that light. That light is truth. Don't be deceived, especially at this time, concerning the appearance of the true Christ. Just as those shepherds were in the field to see the first advent and that babe birthed in a manger in Bethlehem, Bethlehem in the Hebrew tongue being the house of bread. He was the bread of life, uh, born in that manger. Then so is it at this second advent that the messengers are sent again. So you want to be ready for it. And when they say to you, lo, he's here or he's there, and you know he's a fake, know it. Let your faith be strong for the lampo, until we see the lampo. That's the shining, okay, in English. He has not returned. Verse 25, But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. They crucified him, but it was done for us. And as it was in the days of Noah, this is Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. 27, They did drink, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. In other words, it's going to be just like that again. But what was happening there? Well, who were they marrying? Who were these daughters of Adam marrying? Fallen angels, the ones that came with Satan. Okay. And it's going to be happening again. When Satan is booted out of heaven, his fallen angels are kicked out with him. They love women and men that they can deceive. So you want to be very careful. If they say go here and go there, don't go. Okay. Because deception is coming just as it was in the days of Noah when Enoch, a preacher, preached the corruption and the wrong and the hybrids being born. 
that it was wrong. And at that time, Enoch was translated, taken because of his goodness in that corrupt world. It's going to be like that when Satan returns. You want to be prepared for it. Will it affect you? Of course not. Why? You're a child of God. You have faith. And, well, I'm just a little bit worried. With a whole host of angels above you, you're afraid? What's wrong with you? God is in control. And God is able to take care of his own. And besides that, Jesus gave you power over all fallen angels, Satan himself. All you have to do is in the name of Jesus, get And they go. Okay. You don't have anything to worry about. Why? He did it for you. The Savior did. Uh, verse 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they brought, they sold, and planted. This, this word in the Greek means they planted lies. They planted deceit, deception. They built it. They built the, the lies for, and traps to entrap people. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. God's not going to put up with it forever. Okay. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, at the end, when the true Christ returns. Hey, we can cut it. You can cut it. You don't have to worry about it. The host is with you. The light is with you. And God's own love is with you. You have nothing to worry about. 31. In that day, uh, he, shall, um, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. You're not going to need it. The end is here. You don't need a change of clothes. Okay. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. You don't need to go back. In other words, what this is saying, get out of Jerusalem into the wilderness where God will be leading and guide you until it's time for you to witness. I, I can document that, but it's a different subject for a different time. Remember Lot's wife? Don't be like that. What did she do? She got to thinking about how easy it was and what good times they had back there. And she turned around and wanted to go back. God didn't appreciate that, and you know what happened. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Always stay with God. In other words, what is possible at this moment? Well, how could you lose your life? If you were one of God's elect, you could commit the unpardonable sin at this moment, in this moment only by refusing the Holy Spirit to speak through you when you're delivered up before the false Christ. You don't want to do that. Don't sell out. The host, the truth, and the light is with you. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, and the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. A lot of people preach, great, that's the rapture. I'm gone, I'm out of here. Don't deceive yourself. That's not what it's talking about. Well, what's the subject? You've, you've covered it. It's deception. Don't be taken. Stay firm. Stay with the true Christ. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Does that make sense to you? Well, go back to verse 23 and it'll all fall in place for you. Verse 23 says, And they shall say to you, See here or see there, Go not after them nor follow them. Why? Because they're going to Antichrist. They're going to the false one. That's the subject, the object, and faith. And the light, the limpo, protects you and keeps you and, and into the service of the king, the return at the second advent. Um, two men shall be in the field, and one shall be taken and the other left. Again, verse 23, don't go. Stay, the field is the world. Stay in the field working until, for Christ until the true Christ returns, okay? And they answered and said unto him, 
where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. What it is is wherever the body was, the body of Christ was crucified in Jerusalem. And it is there that the vultures will gather. That word is not eagles, it's vultures. And that's where they will gather. You know, we are indeed blessed that we share that light, that lamp on, that truth. And I, I want you to not forget the steps we took in this lecture. Number one, God's light in James 1.17 never changes. The sun will move a sundial and it, it goes all around and the moon goes. God's light is immovable, unchangeable. You can always count on it. That, that gives you strength and stability knowing he's always with you. And secondly, that he's unapproachable in this dimension, but don't let that shake you up. He's here. He can touch you at any time he so chooses to help you when you need it. And he knows. And secondly, that that light brings good news. The birth of Christ to the shepherds. The light brought it. The light saturated them in the hill country. And a host of angels played to them whereby they could see the truth. You know, in that verse, just as soon as they left, they didn't say, maybe we ought to go down there and see if they were fooling us. They didn't say that. They said, let's go see him. They were ready, okay? They knew it was a truth. So God sends witnesses in that light also, and gifts. And secondly, he sends that light to give you strength and power in these end times to not be deceived, to not fall away, and to let that light speak through you. That is to say the Holy Spirit, as it's written in Mark 13, when you're delivered up, that God can use you. That's what this is all about. God's shining light, the Shekinah glory. Shekinah being in the Hebrew tongue, God is there. Yah is there. That's what the word actually says. And he is in that light, that glory. It never goes away. It's always there for his election. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the truth. We thank you for your light, Father. We know and understand, and we stand secure within that. And we thank you for the gifts and the many blessings. We ask a special blessing for this family, Father, wherever they may be.